Aquatub, also called The Point, written and illustrated by Andrew D. Chumley. Forgive me if I pronounce the following badly. Alogos Jul Quanen. This book is dedicated to the companions of the lie. Mabarak Bashad Jinisisi Didalam Junia. He who is illuminated with the brightest light will cast the darkest shadow. Here lie the remnants of a book, once written by no mortal hand, once sealed within a silver vault, and lost amid the desert sand. The Aeon's soul hath forged a key to open wide this book to thee, and show thee that fate hath not planned for thee, Avan Akarana. All holy books I come to burn, save this, which by thy quill I write, all else to ash and dust will turn, the nuptial flame of truth and lie shall quicken by my own ink to dry, and seal the spell in Kadir's urn, the prophet of the peacock quill, hath drunk God's blood from out the cup of Iblis and the blessed few, that with Eve's brood refused to sup, if children of fair Lilith born, come tread the path of blame and scorn, for you from hell have fallen up. My lover, pray draw close to listen, and rest a while, for but an hour, by the well whose waters glisten, neath the vine of Kadir's bower, come share with me the love of night, and like the moth to the candle light, pray sip the dew from Lilith's flower, gaze long, gaze deep into the pool, and with each breath glide gently in, and there content thyself to drift, in skies wherein the angels swim, then look, look up, up from the well, to see these moving lips that tell of thee, thine own reflected twin. Look thou far into the waters, the mirror, wide and pure and clear, and feign a deep and dream-filled sleep, yet leave ajar thine waking ear, and as you listen to each word, thou shalt enflesh that which is heard, the double song of old Kadir. Before the limit of the truth, the infinity of the lie, before the mask it e'er was wrought, when first the watcher's eye met I, before the hand first touched the clay, a voice from silence chanced to speak, yet who spoke? Thou or I? Then the answer to the question, a secret told to none but thee, behold the starry loch quatwab, behold the peacock angel's key, the circle of the year is done, the oath-bound cup lieth returned, by whose hand? They answered, We. The running wine hath stained the book, as ink thy blood is spilt for me, yet time and fools all words erase, but not the secret told to thee. Here the expanse of endless night, where stars like bloodied footprints mark the angel's path by the shoreless sea. Led by a hand one cannot hold, the sword is found where the search doth end. Not in mid-path, nor by its edge, the way doth lie where the path doth bend, shared by footfall and heaven's breath, these murmured words and their meaning tell, and to none but thee their treasures lend. By attraction to this moment, the thought of hand and eye is one, each course divert, each care forget, on pathways lost is fortune won, in strain wide as wisdom found, to turn the thread and tie the knot, which by no hand may be undone. The path that moveth, standing still, not then, not yet, not e'er, but now, in moments strung like prayer beads, whose telling doth all times allow, 
each instant ground between the mill of years that turn their will until the age doth to this moment bow. As sure as silence each word doth end, the secret in this book is caught, as foot shall surely follow foot, and thought and thought shall follow thought. Do the question and the answer in the wish of the wish itself, this truth by many lies is taught, the prophet's pen, the murdering knife, both leave a single secretress upon the parchment of our life. The signature of Lesbis in writing, I shall cut the thread that bindeth both the quick and dead, and yet my words may tie the cord to guide the hand of Nemesis. Speak here, O peacock angel's child, let thy quill of itself to write, and silent bleed the first god's vein, to draw thine ink from blackest light, feed the fire of this burning book, with words born from thine own heart's flame, show here the way of the dragon's flight. O thou lead, black bell of heaven, ring, Lord, thy fatal carillon. Exultant peal thine omen burdened kneel, and grant my lips the dragon's song. Shatter, O thou, upturned growl of night, spill out thy staring nectar dew to bless the tryst of Atia's throng. He that leadeth this procession doth wear the guise of god and beast, as the ox goad and the oxen, who leadeth most doth guide the least. Seeketh thou for light or darkness, seeketh thou for truth or lies, when either serve where thou shalt feast. Meet me at the altar table, meet me beneath the black noon sun. Drink from the cup of thine own blood, and seek for that which all men shun. At midnight, mid the field of corn, the bull is slain, the snake is born. Thy path this moment hath begun. As crooked as the lightning bolt, and narrow as the sharpest knife, the way exact beyond all laws, who chanceth not shall lose his life, he that murdereth his brother, and becometh wholly other, shall take the daemon for his wife. Charis draconum genuit et darum draco spake the queen of all the night and the twilight beach, whose words have secrets in heaven between. My child, hast thou come here to drink? Poison dripped golden from my kiss, and hope to glimpse that few have seen. The feathers of the plum snake from the dragon scaled unfold, and there the starry embers glint with fire amid the green and gold. Each plume doth frame with wimbo, rainbow hues, the azure eyes of black taus, whose winged gaze burneth deathly cold. O dragon heart of energy, who dwelleth in the form of void, thy coils encircle each event, and thee all forces are alloyed. Thy breath doth hear life's flame to thought, till all back to thy mouth is brought. None but thee and the dragon soul create, and yet fate's law avoid. The talion decree is set upon thy brow, the dead king's crown. Thy talons rend the scrolls of law, although thou hast brought the most high down, God destroyer, God begetter, thy maelstrom soul, my sin is sure. Hail, O beast of fear and far renown, O thou metacosm of between, who art above, below, beyond, thine attributes of we name and make. For aught imagined is that we know, by this we forge the aeon's chain, fate's edge to break yet preordain, God's clay upon man's will to throw, with seven handfuls of the earth, 
brought on to me by Azrael, I shall grant man a greater form, and with my breath the image fill. Its thought shall hold a world urban, urbane. Its flesh exceed the mortal grain, and with its word the sculptor kill. The potter's wheel is yet the mill, where all is ground unto the moat. The age within the moment sought, the sea that in each tear doth float, each atom cut, each instant cracked, all words unto the thought traced back, to hear the song in the single note. Where doth hang the dragon's crown? Where doth his jeweled snake skin drape, and drip the bloodied seed of pain? The ruby wine of Kadir's grape, above the shadowy form called man, whose hand doth touch this very page, whereon are charms to make him god, or yet, to mask the ape. And were the face of Uranana, storm-veiled as in a wolfish pelt, his howls a heaven's battle rage, before his throne hath nature knelt, but see the hand upon the page, shall trace a word beyond its age, and draw the sword from great Orion's belt. The world's upon each fingertip, show where the whirlwind's dance hath passed, each line doth show each turn of fate, to mark the way from first to last, the stolen gift of dragon's fire, a scorched a path which few desire, beyond the future, in the past. The tree grown out of the mouth of hell, from seeds dropped from the sinner's plate, hath spanned the arch of the heaven's roof, and caused the world's edge to abate. From each boar hang sweet nectared fruit, yet venoms feed the deepest root. Here, the path without a path, beyond the gateless gate, who with each sin shall rise above the crowded carnal bed of earth, yet take his fill from pleasure's breaths, and sate himself amidst her mirth, shall make each vice a ladder's rung, wherewith to climb the death-strewn mire, and from each corpse reclaim his birth? O oh, what shall I dare to name thee, thou who art son of the sum, whose steps succeed the tongue's own edge, whose soul hath ratio to none, thy star doth cast the god's own light, peerless art, man over man, who shall not from thy mere shadow run, shall I call thee Asdera, the fire drake of antient fame, or yet call thee old Kadir, or doth the angel hide thy name, yeah, Thou art these and evermore, thou art the soul within the core of I, who am the very same. I am known, and thou art mystery, wisdom, and love. I name thee muse. What voice I have to praise thee, when speech will but thy beauty lose? Thou dancest ever out of reach, and with thy guile the guileless teach. Of me the pen that wrote thy ruse. Silence braileth the sphinx smile. Within the hollow idol's breast, To break the god's own wooden robe, And add it to the phoenix nest. The secret that is called the lie, There is no truth, but here is all, Not to device, but yet to test. The fool behind the smiling mask, Doth ever watch the stranger's face, and seeking there to catch the gate, shall find, but blindless in its place, the eyes of truth seek for the lie, and men but seek and wonder why, both in the mirror and no trace. All gods are worthy of belief, if they should answer to thy call, but all that faileth to avail, should swiftly out of heaven fall, like lead returned unto the forge, where magic turneth all to gold, to fake one image of them all, ever looking, never seen, by surface known unto the eye, the idols of our passing love, silent, listen without reply, only echoes answer prayer, since garlands of 
base fading praise, live with sudden beauty, then die. Whom do I seek that may he found within the solitude of thee? Thou hast escaped beyond the breach that maketh all but memory between the hand, the touch, the thought, flieth the moth which none have caught, yet I the flame, thine end shall be. Thine eye in seeking seeth not, the reaching hand, it graspeth air. Though blind and bound, thine eye and hand have found me, neither here nor there, whilst either side the temple door, men rush to lie with priest or whore, all pass me naked on the stair. Doth Allah unto Adam speak, or doth an idol sing man's verse? Whilst I into the haram creep, with gold fallen from the temple purse, and there with thee, mine odalisk, I'll pass an hour and take the risk to watch them both my words rehearse. I do not err, but aberrate, no virtue sin may not redress. I do but turn the other face to those that strike, return no less. From every cup my lips shall taste, nor spare that drop which fools do waste, who drink then fall in God's wine press. O oh, crime, what is thine infamy? The shame in which we cloak our need, a veil to hide that which we fear, the book in which we may not read, O oh, evil, who art the drug divine, who maketh blood to taste like wine. Thou hast made mine eyes to see, in golden fruit, a leaden seed. By year by day, and by each moment, the abyss crossed the pathway, strayed. Each, sac each sacrifice doth mark the road, each slow old flesh new from new flesh flayed. Great instance marketh lightning birth, and far beyond both womb and grave, earth dead stars, whilst mine image made. Over what pass? I upon the bridge, self to self, over self's abyss. There my death, and there my tryst, in mirrors cracked my mirrored kiss. Most loath, yet most desired, the one that through the crack doth slip, whose curse is mine, but mine to miss. The well that once gave life to me, Hath in the drought of love run dry, The desert soul hath stole all joy, And taught the very muse to die. Yet from this cause of vast lament run tears, Suffice all thirsts to quench, Tears wept from secret pleasure's eye. A thousand unfinished banquets Are tasted with a single bite of blood, Bright fangs through bone white skin to fill my soul with black delight. This love shall not till morning live, yet tomorrow shall its death forgive with a finger held to the lips of night. The hell of those who cannot speak, whose hearts grow cold with untold pain, whose love still born dieth unfulfilled, whose thoughts upon the tongue's least strain. This muted crowd, my sorrows bear, and in their silence, silence share. Yet by the quill in hell I reign. A mirage upon the prophet's tower, a darkly shining silhouette, crowned man of shadow formed, atop the temple's minaret. It whispereth to the mizun, to clip or lift the prayer's wing, and cast God from the parapet, unseen, who stalketh behind, O thee, when thou dost walk out alone, who creepeth nigh all dying men, to separate their flesh from bone, then draweth down the dust of age, to dry the blood, spilt on the page, and hide the life within the stone. 
The sleeper lieth upon the rock, tethered to the line of shadow. It dreameth dreams of death and time, where life's river runneth shallow, till time's untimely turning wheel doth all dreamt of fortune steal, pierced through by fate's true aimed arrow. Sheathed in a mask of emerald, the desert neath the verdant land. Until the sapphire waters wash the pearl from out each grain of sand, upon that sea the stone shall float, a light to lure the mage's boat, like dew caught in the spider strand. Amid the company of the wise, from lip to lip, truth taketh flight, and word from word they tear apart. All thoughts that are not hid from this sight cease for now. Thy book is writ, the muse's hand stirreth wisdom's bowl, and thee within that cucurbite. All ancient books of law shall burn, and then will countless wise men shout their tongues, the flames outstretched to cry, a prayer to put the fire out. But one sage will be silent. And in the flames my words will see. The truth within is truth without. Silence locked within the note. Hath found a voice within the flute. And there, in playing out my song, Hath lent its speech unto the mute, Who sage and fool, of speak at leisure, And speaking seek the other's pleasure, we may with silence hold dispute the hell of those who do but speak, whose tongues but move the air in vain, their voices stifle heart and thought, who live to speak their lives again. Their prayers are curses that repeat, their sins and thus their silence cheat, all words are lies, yet truth sustain. The Messiah and the liar both rhyme and share a single meaning. How may a man of virtue learn when others seek to bear his sin? These hands upon heaven's broken tablet break bread with new reality to feed the man of manless kin. The brothel keeper and the priest both at the sinner's pleasure eat and oft from wisdom's coffer, thieve, a bowl for begging in the street, and that cup catch equal coins, for prayers to part that virgin's loins. Both with their tears wash wisdom's feet, the pearl, wherein the moon is caught, hath upon my tide reached Pura's shore. Though gold may steal of heaven's light, what coin may open? Thy crimson door, a leaden disc from a dead man's tongue, will buy the soul of the lustrous sun, and make thy flesh my temple floor. Music, lift up my sacrifice, thus sang the lapis flute for Zhang, and at my word, let fall the blade upon the ripened field of man, let old Ad Adam bend beneath the scythe, and grant the new his bloody tithe. Thus sang the voice of Azran. The dagger drawn across the lips stealeth more than a common kiss, divideth more than mortal flesh to draw from thee the serpent's kiss. Thrust deep, Thrice turned about the heart, this knife shall to thy soul impart the pain of hell as heaven's bliss. The world is swathed with inflayed skin, torn from my back and hung to dry. A sarah cloth for another corpse, and yet another, by and by, a swaddling cloth to wrap the babe. Who suckleth straight the hanged man's seed? Our first words, they do but echo 
that which we utter as we die. The winking eyes of Azrael open wide for every soul, cast forth their stare upon each life, an eye Iliad of burning coal, and with each death an eye doth close, as winter's hand plucketh summer's rose, our lives are done, yet our sight is whole. This hour I lead the blind did seraph, this hour I, I guide the blind one home. For my soul his sight hath stole. And hand in hand with thee we roam through the graveyard beneath the vine to kiss and drink of Lilith's wine in a bed of clay neath heaven's dome. O stone lid of the coffin shut to cut the breath of the sleeper that the hands of death may reach out, draw him down and ever deeper to dissolve amid the endless years the drink from hell's own tear-filled cup who once mourned is now the weeper. Night's tenebrous mental falleth, cover my head with sleep, and twixt the gates of dusk and dawn, in dreams my soul will wander deep, down through tortile webs of cabin, to leap the rifts of vertigo, and speak with those that secrets keep. This body mine, and yet of whom? House of monstrous forms unknown, of gods and beasts and lost jinn, of times a scene hard alone, all turned to dusk, dust, my muse, my love, save thou, who art called snake and dove, upon those whose breath my dust is blown, the breath of heaven leaveth hell, to kiss the quarters, each in turn, to rouse the desert into storm, these remnants to thy hands return, this book is whole but for today, then shall my hands pluck it away, to once more in the desert burn. The daughters of pale Lilith stand on the letters of this book, and with my brothers guide thy hand, to once more amid the pa these pages look. All men are welcome here to try, to chance their lives or else to die, mere men upon God's fishing hook. The sickle moon hath reaped the corn, and bathed the grain in scarlet flood. The rays have cut earth's heart in twain, and drowned thee all in dragon's blood. Her hand hath pulled thee from the tomb, and cast thee out from Lilith's womb, to suckle from her flower bud. The fish hath leaped the dragon's gate, the bird escaped the hunter's hand, and God hath died and yet become a man with peacock feathers fanned, a seraph wreathed in azure's flame, whose feet do burn the lightning path, yet leave no trace upon the sand. The merchant crying at the city gates, the masks of truth to falsely sell, hath emptied wisdom's purse of gold and Cross the coins within the well, they glisten neath the moment's wave, reflect the sun's own wishful gaze, then join the pearl within the shell. At the crossroads of all pathways, where fated men their fate appoint, the peacock angel and the snake, with venom mine own brow anoint, they cast my corpse upon the pyre, then walk away within the fire, who followeth hath found the path lost within the empty point. Walk on this instant of Quetub, be thou the thunderbolt of chance between the gate of this and that, as absence in thy presence dance, take thou the world to be thy lover, and take thyself and make it other, to this the fly turn fate askance.